In this video, we are going to create and work with audio tracks. So first of all, let's create an audio track. And you can do this by going up to Track and choosing New. And in this tracks window, we are going to choose an audio track to work with. Now, I am going to be recording a shaker here. And um, one of the questions I get often is, should I choose mono or stereo? And basically, uh, stereo tracks are for if you are recording a source with two microphones in a stereo pattern, such as an XY pattern, an AB pattern, ORTF, or bloom line, and etc. Stereo tracks are also for instances where you may be recording the audio from a drum machine, keyboard, or some other external device that has two line outputs, a left and a right channel that you have plugged into your interface. Now, mono tracks are for all other situations, especially if you are recording a source with one microphone or you are recording an external device that only has a mono output. So in this case, I am going to be recording shakers with just one microphone. And so because of that, it's going to be a mono track. And over here, we have the option to choose samples or tick-based. And when determining between tick or sample-based tracks, you are basically deciding whether you want the clips on the tracks to sync to time or to the bars and beats. And since I want to work on a song, I'm going to choose tick-based for my tracks. And this setting can easily be changed later. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Create. And now I've got my audio track right here. Now, one of the first things that you should do when working with your tracks is rename the track. And that's important because it will ensure that the clips that are recorded on that track will also be named according to the name of your track. So to do that, just double click on the name and I'm going to go ahead and name this Shaker. The other thing I want to do is I want to resize my track. And the way you can do that, you can either go to the bottom of your track until your cursor looks like this, and then you can drag to change the height of your track. The other way too is there are two areas right here on this bar. You can click and choose your track height. And you can also click this little drop down arrow at the left of the track to also pick different heights. So I've got my microphone plugged into my interface on input three. So the next step is that you want to change your inputs and outputs. Now, if you can't see this in your window, then you want to go to the drop down here on your edit window view selector and make sure that you've checked in out. And then you'll see this section right here. So I'm going to go ahead and choose input number three. And then my output, I'm using output one and two as my main output. So I'm all set to go there. Now the ideal way to record in Pro Tools is by monitoring the source you are recording through the Pro Tools software itself. However, to do this effectively without hearing a delay, you'll have to set a low buffer setting in the playback engine. And this often works great until your session starts pushing the limits of your computer. When that happens, you will need to use a low latency monitoring setting that I will explain in another video. So to check and make sure that you have a low buffer setting in your playback engine, go to Setup, Playback Engine, and right here where it says Hardware Buffer Size, you want to make sure that you are set at either 32 or 64 samples to avoid hearing a delay. And then press OK. The next thing you want to do is make sure that you are in auto input monitoring mode. And you will know if you are in the right mode if this light here is gray. Now if it is green, then you need to go to track. And right here it will say auto input monitoring. And you want to click there. And when you do that, it will turn the light off. I will explain more about the details of those two modes in a later video. 
Now, the most common recording modes to use are normal and quick punch. And we are going to go ahead and start with using the normal mode. And so I'm going to go ahead and record enable the shaker track. And we are going to go ahead and get a level set. Now I am aiming for the peaks of the shaker to hit maybe the lower brighter green. And even if it all stays in the darker green, I'm okay with that as well. What I don't want to do is record levels that are in the middle or upper light green, especially since I am in 24 bits in this session. I have the ability to be able to record my levels a lot quieter and leave all of this for headroom. So let's go ahead and check the levels here. Okay, perfect. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn on a two bar count off and we are going to go ahead and press record by pressing three on the numeric keypad. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about quick punch mode. And what that allows you to do is that when we are playing back, it'll allow me to punch in and out while I play back the recording. So I can start by just pressing space bar, and then anytime I want to punch in, I will press three, and then when I want to punch back out, I will press three again. And I can do that multiple times throughout the recording. So let me show you how that works. Okay, so you probably noticed how I punched in three different times. Now the nice thing about this mode is that it's actually always recording. So if I miss punched somewhere, I can actually edit the clip and still get my full recording of what I did. Let's go ahead and unarm the track from being recorded. Now let's use some inserts to add different timbres and effects to this shaker recording. And to do this, we are going to go to the insert section and just click on one of these insert slots, go to plugin, and let's go ahead and add an EQ to change the timbre of the sound. So I'm going to go to EQ. Now you may notice that you don't have as many options and that is okay. It just means that I have installed some additional third-party plugins. But I'm going to go ahead and select one that comes with Pro Tools, which is the EQ3 7 band. And I'm going to go ahead and play back the audio and change the timbre with the plugin. And I can also add different kinds of effects such as delays or reverbs which gives it the sound of it being played on a stage or in a different environment. So I'm going to go to reverb and I'm going to select deverb mono to stereo because I'd like the reverb to be stereo and I'm just going to make adjustments here between the dry and the wet signal. All right, so you can hear how the sound can be changed by using inserts on the track. Now there are more efficient ways to be able to add effects such as reverbs and delays to your project, and we will address that in one of the next videos. But if you are going to be using inserts on your track, it's important to make sure that you do have delay compensation turned on, and you will find the delay compensation light indicator right up here in the toolbar. And if you don't see that, then just go to options and make sure that you've checked delay compensation and so that that's turned on. And that just makes sure that as you add inserts to your track that because it takes time for 
the insert to process, uh, delay compensation, basically make sure that everything plays back in time when you play back your track.